Revelation chapter number 3. The Lord put these verses on my heart this week. And uh, I certainly hope the message is of help to us. I know God wants to be of help to us. We'll begin reading verse number 20. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, uh, we truly would rather have you than anything that this world could afford. Lord, we are thankful that you're not only the God, you're our God. Lord, we bless your holy name. We do thank you for the privilege of once again being able to look into the perfect law of liberty. We're thankful for these dear folks that got to come. Lord, we realize many more desire to come. And God, we pray that, Lord, you would continue to eradicate this virus. You would deal with uh, uh, the conditions that we are facing, that uh, soon and very soon we can once again assemble as the body of Christ and be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray for our church family. I pray for those that, uh, Lord, uh, may be getting a little depressed or discouraged or distraught during these times, that, God, you would uplift their spirit. I'm reminded that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And God, I pray that you would help them and you would sustain them during these days. I pray for any that are sick, you would touch them and help them. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would certainly deal with your uh, children through the Word of God tonight. And I pray for any that may be tuning in who are not saved, that, Lord, we'd see them get saved before it's everlasting too late. Thank you, Lord, for those that have been an encouragement during these times, those that, Lord, have uh, reached out and said they've appreciated the live stream. Uh, we all know it's different. We all know it's difficult. But, Lord, we do know that you uh, uh, can use it for your honor and for your glory, and we pray that you would do so tonight. Bless now. Get glory to your name, and we'll thank you for what you do. Lord, certainly be with our president and our leaders, Lord, and give them wisdom during these days. Uh, Lord, be with our sister churches. Help them in their struggles as well. And God, at the end of all of this, I pray you'd send revival like we've only dreamed of. We'd see many come to Christ, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we do ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things. Uh, uh, here as we find at the end of chapter number 3, the book of Revelation, as the Lord is uh, 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 inspiring John to pin down what uh, he has seen. And uh, 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 you know John was on the Isle of Patmos. He had been exiled uh, for the audacity of being a believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, and John, while on the Isle of Patmos, uh, the Lord blessed him, called him up to the third heaven, and showed him things which should be for hereafter. Uh, and God told him to write them down. Uh, and because John was faithful and because John uh, received the revelation, you and I have it tonight. Uh, now, I want you to notice as a way of introduction the concluding assessment uh, in verse number 20. Uh, 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 up to this point in chapters 2 and chapter 3, uh, there's been some messages to the churches uh, and the conclusion of it. Uh, the Lord says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him uh, and will sup with him uh, and he with me. Uh, a lot of people want to use this verse uh, dealing with lost people. Uh, and can I say the Lord is knocking on the heart of lost people, uh, desiring for them to let him in uh, so he can become the Lord and Savior of their lives. Uh, but here he is dealing with the seven churches uh, and those that would be a part of a church in uh, generations to come. Uh, he is concluding the assessment uh, of what he's done. Uh, uh, in chapters 2 and 3, we find uh, uh, there is a report to seven distinct churches. Uh, a lot of people want to uh, 
uh, uh, use dispensations uh, and apply that to certain church ages. Uh, make no mistake, you can draw parallels to certain church ages uh, from the messages to these churches, uh, but make no mistake, uh, these are seven reports uh, to seven literal churches uh, that the Lord uh, is sending them uh, uh, so they can understand uh, uh, something from God. Uh, we see the report to the seven churches, and in these reports, uh, uh, God reveals to them their uh, condition uh, and their standing uh, with Him. Uh, can I say only one got a great report? Uh, some got some good reports, uh, but the Lord told them all their strengths, uh, all that they were doing good. Uh, but there were some, He said, but I have somewhat against thee. Uh, and He'd tell them where they weren't measuring up, uh, where they weren't doing good, where there was room for improvement. Uh, and so there was the revelation to those seven churches. Uh, you know what preaching is good for? Uh, uh, we, we can hear from heaven. Uh, and then the Lord begins to reveal unto us uh, where we're doing okay, uh, but yet where we need to move up uh, and get closer to God. Uh, uh, we find a report to the seven churches. We find the revelation of their standing with God. Uh, and then we find uh, there is a response demanded from God in lieu of what they've heard. Uh, can I say the difference between uh, teaching and preaching? Teaching imparts information. Preaching requires a decision. And when the Lord is speaking to his churches, he is always demanding a response from them uh, in accordance to what they've just heard. Uh, uh, the indictment of our day and age, we've sat in church, we've heard preaching, we go out and we never respond to it. Might be why God shut off churches we see the concluding assessment. In these verses, we also find the crowning achievement. Look at verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. The Lord is telling uh, 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 these churches, and he's telling believers, uh, that if we'll put God first and we'll seek His face and we'll be obedient to His voice uh, and we'll do what thus saith the Lord in our life, uh, that one day uh, in that celestial city, uh, because we overcame the flesh, because we overcame the world, because we overcame the devil, uh, uh, because we put God first, uh, uh, there's coming a rewarding day uh, when we'll be blessed uh, as an overcomer in this life to get to sit with Him in His throne in that life. Can I say... Uh, what a crowning achievement. You know, a lot of people strive to make a, a, a name for themselves in this world. There are uh, uh, folks that strive for the Hall of Fame in athletics and all kinds of other things. Uh, do you realize there's a Baptist Hall of Fame? I've been to it. It's up in uh, 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 Canton, Ohio. But uh, can I say this? There's a lot of people wanting to make all kinds of notoriety for themselves in this life. And I say there's nothing better to be recognized for what you did in this life than the life to come. And that's by getting to sit with the Lord in his throne. Huh? Can you imagine that? Uh, all the saints from ages on, they're looking around in heaven. They look up at the Lord, and there you are sitting, Brother Clint. And they say, what's that little hillbilly boy doing up there with the Lord? Huh? That's that one that overcame. What a blessing. We see a concluding assessment. We see a crowning achievement. But then we see there's a call to action. Look in verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And could I say, when we are sitting in the house of God, when we are listening to preaching, when we're watching it be a live stream, the Lord is telling us what he told his disciples while he was teaching them on earth, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. And how many times did he say, verily, verily, I say unto you? He's saying, pay attention, listen. Here he says again, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, the Spirit of God, saith to the churches. And as we read those messages to those churches, and as we read the Bible, we need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. It's utterly important. Again, how many times have we been in church, heard preaching, it goes in one ear and out the other. Have we really... Listen to what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that hath an ear, let him hear. There's a call to action. Now what I'm interested in is found in verse number 20. In verse number 20 it says, Behold. 
I stand at the door and knock. I'm interested in that word behold. The word behold means to look upon, means to detect, means to discern, means to distinguish, means to focus on, means to be fixed on, means to play, pay close attention to. And God is making an emphatic statement. He says, behold, he's saying, you need to look upon what I'm about ready to say. You need to detect what I'm saying to you right now. You need to discern what I'm trying to tell you right now. You need to distinguish this from other thoughts that you have. You need to focus on this. And can I say what real revival is about is putting things back in focus. If there's one thing that's happened in the last few weeks, folks should be putting some things into perspective and focus for their lives. He's saying you need to be fixed on what I'm, I'm fixing to tell you, and you need to pay very close attention. I'm interested in this phrase, verse number 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. I want to preach with God's help on that verse. I want to preach on God's final plea. This is the last message to the last church or to these churches after the last letter to the church. And the last letter to the church is lay out of sin. They were increased with goods. They thought they had need of nothing. And the Lord told them he'd spew them out of his mouth because they were lukewarm. Uh, they didn't realize that they were poor, blind, wretched, naked. Uh, uh, when it came to spiritual things, they were empty. And then the Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Can I say nothing catches God by surprise? There's no such thing as accidents or coincidences. And uh, this coronavirus is not some accident just blew through and caught God by surprise. There is no such thing as God being caught off guard. And can I say nothing happens that God doesn't permit it to happen. So God has allowed this to come into this world for such a time as this. Now, we may not know until we get to glory all the ramifications of this thing, but I find it amazing that in America, America is, is absolutely sports crazy. In America, I heard one commentator say uh, several years ago, the most important thing in the world is sports. And for the last month, God shut sports down. Well, the most uh, 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 iconic times of the year, something called March Madness. It's a basketball tournament for college basketball. They don't have one this year. I even heard today that the vice president talked to all the commissioners of, uh, of college sports uh, uh, this very day and made this statement that they cannot have sports if they don't have children on the campus in their schools. Now they're talking about college football being canceled in the fall. People will lose their minds if that's the case. Can I say, God shut down sports. There are so many people that are so concerned about all the morons in Hollywood. God shut Hollywood down. There are some folks that uh, uh, are so obsessed with uh, uh, gluttony that all they want to do is go to the restaurants and avoid God's house, and God shut the restaurants down. Matter of fact, other than uh, the very vital necessity things, God shut them down. Can I say for years, people have aimlessly groped into church and groped out. They've complained about how long the preacher preaches. They've complained about who's there and who's not there. And they've complained about what this one wore and what that one didn't wear. And they've complained and they've uh, uh, marveled. They've sat down. Uh, uh, they've listened to preaching and listened to preaching. They've heard it so much it bounces off of them. Uh, they never uh, heed to it. Uh, they don't embrace it. Uh, uh, it's a standing uh, uh, um, vernacular now that we've got Sunday morning only people. They only show up on Sunday. Sunday morning they think that's all they need of God uh, and folks got to where they worship brick and mortar uh, folks got to where uh, uh, church was just about uh, 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 coming together with your friends and hanging out with your friends uh, church was no longer about worshiping almighty God and God shut church down and now God stands outside knocking this might be his final plea Friend, you've got to be in absolute 
Bible moron to not look around what's going on in this world and not know Jesus is coming soon. The Lord's coming. He's coming soon. Get things all winding up. I preached less than a month ago on this thing's inching toward the Antichrist. I think we've got past the inching stage. I think we're headed there very quickly. We found out in the last few weeks just how much rights we don't have as Americans. With a stroke of a pen, one person in charge can do away with all your civil liberties. As we sit here today, folks trying to have church, they're being arrested, they're being ticketed because they have the audacity of going to church. This past weekend, just south of Louisville, Maryville, Brother Jack Roberts, I know Brother Jack, I've been to that church. Matter of fact, that's a church I met Brother Mike Goodson at. I've been in that church. Uh, 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 they uh, had the audacity of being so wicked to have church service. The state police was called on them. But what the news don't tell you is on Friday, the governor let 600 criminals out of jail. Let's criminals out of jail and wants to put Christians in jail. My dear friends, we have found that everything that we used to take solace in has been disrupted might be God just trying to get somebody's attention right before he comes back. This might be God's final plea to his church to be revived, get right, do the works that we're supposed to be, be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world, start putting God first again, or pay the consequences. Well, let's look at God's final plea in verse number 20. Can I say, I want you to notice God's position. Look again in verse number 20. He says, Behold, I stand at the door. Where's God's position at? He's outside. Isn't it amazing that the devil never misses a church service, but God has to be invited to his own house? He's standing without. He's standing outside. God is not welcome in his own house in most instances uh, 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 nowadays. Uh, uh, people are more interested where they're going to eat dinner after service. Uh, they're more interested in who's there and who's not there. Uh, they're interested in all kinds of things rather than God. Uh, matter of fact, you can give an altar call and you can just about count on who's going. There are some people who have never been in the altar because it's not about God with him. He's standing outside, knocking, trying to get in. God's left out in a lot of our lifestyle. How much do we really seek his face? How much do we really put him first? How much do we really include God? Most of the time we leave God out. We, we plan our lives, we set the courses of our day, never consulting God and never seeking God's will on it. We find the position of God, he's outside. Notice God's pleading. Look what it says, verse number 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's pleading. He's knocking. Let me in. Nobody ever knocks without wanting somebody that's inside to come out and address them. God is pleading with his people. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't we be pleading with God? God, we need you. God, we can't live without you. God, you're so vital to us. And yet we have gotten so good at going to church without God, we don't even miss him. And he's standing outside pleading, let me in. I said this before, when I first got saved back in the 70s, 1974, there was a lot of preaching on the rapture, the end times. I mean, the oil crisis was uh, upon us. There was so much turmoil in the world. And there were, and preachers were preaching on the end times. And in my little mind, I was trying to wrap my head around that if the Lord came back and he took his church out of here, wouldn't the rest of the world take notice of how many Christians disappeared? Now, you fast forward nearly 50 years, and the words of Jesus so real he said when the son of man cometh will he find faith on the earth can I say in most so called churches they don't even use the word of God the Bible makes it clear that we're begotten again by an incorruptible seed if you don't use God's word you're not getting born again you're welcome I make people mad every time I say that 
The Spirit of God only uses one book, the one he wrote. And so if they don't use the Bible, they don't preach the Bible, they're not really a church. They're just an organization. And can I say a lot of what they do is just humanism? And then when you start looking at even Bible-believing churches, how there's been a great falling away and how people really don't do business with what God says. The Lord's just pleading, let me back in. Let me back in. Can I say, as we sit here tonight, the church gets raptured out. They'll just say we were coronavirus or something, COVID-19 or something, just add to the statistics, and they won't even miss us. Matter of fact, well, the wicked world will be glad we're gone. They despise us anyway. But I wonder how many folks sit in Baptist churches week in and week out, and after the Lord takes his church out, They'll show back up on the next following Sunday, not even knowing what really happened. Can I say, the Lord's outside pleading, wanting folks to let him in. Notice his petition. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice. You see, we live in a day and age where everything's uh, done by visual. Matter of fact, the world is trying to tell the church that we can still have church through this visual live stream. But you see, they don't understand. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. With God, it's not a visual thing. It's a discerning thing. It's a hearing thing. And when we hear from the Spirit, when we hear from the word of God, then our faith is increased. It's real hard to discern the Spirit when we're not gathered together. Hmm. They don't understand that. It's not visual with us. Hmm. Baptists aren't interested in theatrics. We're interested in preaching and being obedient to what God said. And so we see that my dear friends, he is saying, if any man will hear my voice. So many churches you go into, they'll tell you, oh, about the preacher, about the preacher, about the preacher. After several years, that sorry, no good preacher. That sorry, no good preacher. They get used to his voice. But unfortunately, we don't listen for God's voice. It's not about the preacher. It's about what the Lord says. And we see he's standing outside pleading. His petition is, listen, hear me. Hear what I'm saying. He's trying to get folks' attention because he's coming back and he wants everybody to be ready. You've got lost loved ones. They're unsaved. Well, if, you're never, if you're ever going to be concerned for them, you better get on fire for God. They need to see something different in you. What amazes me is how many Christians, when this thing came up, this virus, they just laid down and accepted everything. They didn't say, well, we're going to just trust God. We're going to, uh, uh, God's never forsaken his people. Well, I, I mean, this might have been our Red Sea experience, and most Christians are murmuring, wanting to go back to Egypt. Rather than saying, we're just going to believe God's going to get us through this. I've heard more disdain from Christian people than I have from the people in the world. So afraid and so fearful of all this stuff. How many times have you heard me tell you you're going to die and you're going to die of something? What does that have to do with God? I want to go out in the center of God's will. Listen, I've done, I've done face cancer. COVID doesn't scare me at all. But yet so many people are so afraid. So afraid. Got to have hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Good luck finding any of that nowadays. Wish I'd had stock in Charmin. Huh? So many people are so afraid because they haven't listened to God. God's been warning us for years. This day's coming. This day's coming. And yet it caught so many people by surprise. How many times have you heard me preach out of 2 Timothy chapter 3? This know also in the last days perilous times shall come. Where well, they're here. And the Lord is pleading. 
Listen to me. The Lord has a word for us. He has a work for us. He has worship for us. We've got to be willing to do it his way. Notice his pretense. He says, if any man hear my voice, now here's where it gets real tricky, and open the door. See, it's one thing when we're in a tragedy like we're in right now, and all of a sudden, boy, I want to do what God says. Remember after 9-11? Church house was filled. Till about two weeks. And everybody went back to their normal routines. See, people, they'll listen when everything hits. But they won't open the door. It's one thing to hear what God says. It's another thing to be obedient to what God says. He says, if any man will hear my voice and open the door. You know what I know about lost people? Most lost people know they're lost. You know why they don't get saved? They don't open the door. But Clint sings that song, Secret Place. Until you open the door to your heart, God can't get in there and do a work. Until you, don't, you realize that you need God and you open the door and you let God in to do a work in your life, you'll never have a revival. Well, I'm praying and trusting when this thing opens up, there'll be such an appreciation for the house of God that people will flood it. People will certainly uh, fall at the Savior's feet and kiss His feet and worship Him and exalt Him and be busy about the Father's business. But what I fear, the longer this thing goes on, the more people just get used to staying away and they won't open their heart to God. God's petition is for us to hear, but the pretense of God doing something is we have to be obedient. We have to open our heart. God's not going to open your heart. God's going to tell you you're a sinner if you're lost. He's going to tell you he'll save you, but you have to ask him to be saved. If you're saved... God's going to tell you what your good points. He's going to tell you your bad points, but uh, he's going to tell you that he'll send revival if you'll open the door and let him send revival. He's not going to force himself on anybody. He's a gentleman. Didn't say God had a battering ram to knock down the door. He's knocking at the door. He's saying, will you listen? Will you open up your heart? Will you let me in? And notice the promise from God. He said, if any man will hear my voice, open the door, I will. That's a promise from God. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Can I say, that terminology, sup with him, is a very intimate term. Back in years gone by, what they would do when they would sup is they would... Uh, pour a little coffee in a dish or a little drink in a dish in a saucer and one would get on one side the other would get on the other side and they're face to face drinking from the same saucer they said that was supping they were so close and so intimate it was so wonderful and what the Lord is saying is that if we'll open our heart to him and we'll listen to what he has to say, that he'll come in and it'll be so wonderful and so special, we'll be so close to God, that we'll be uh, 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 so intimate that it will uh, propel us far above anything that we're facing in this world. Can I say, if you're nose to nose with God, what in the world does anything else matter? Are you worried about COVID-19 when you're nose to nose with God? No. Are you worried about anything when you're nose to nose with God? No. And you know what I've found about anybody in the Bible that's been that close to God? Others take note that they've been that close to God. Hmm? You remember the apostles there in Acts? They took note that they'd been with Jesus. Hmm? Remember Moses came down from the mountain and his face shined. And can I say, if we uh, 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 will open the doors of our hearts and let the Lord do what he wants to do in us, uh, my dear friends, uh, uh, he'll begin to sup with us and he'll become so real and rich in our life uh, that those around us will notice there's something different. Uh, they'll notice that we've been with God uh, and they too will desire what we have. 
How do you think that so many people got saved early on in the early church in the book of Acts? 3,000 on the day of Pentecost, just a few chapters later, 5,000 added to How do you think so? Because they took notice of the change in those that have been with God. You know the indictment against the church in our day and age? They look at us and they wonder, what's the big deal? But if they see that we've been with Jesus and they see a change in us, they'll say, I want what those people have. Matter of fact, they, they won't be worrying about masks and gloves. They'll want Jesus. The problem is, are we listening? And are we opening our hearts? Are we hearing and opening? Because that's what it's going to take. The final plea of God is, hey, he's fed up. He's had it. He has sent preachers. Can I say in our day and age, we've got the best preaching that there's ever been. We have more preaching available than there's ever been. Can I say we have more talent as far as people singing than there's ever been? I mean, we have uh, uh, better facilities. We got more equipment. We got so much equipment, I can't even go up in the sound room and even find any. I don't even know what all that stuff is. Uh, we got the best of everything. We just don't have God. And I remember back before we had microphones in the church, before we had padding on the pews, before we had carpet on the floor. We didn't have a lot of that, but we had a whole lot of God. What's happened? We've sold out. We've taken convenience rather than be convicted and converted to what God wants us to be. And so God is pleading for us to get our eyes off of everything that's going on, to get our minds out of everything we desire, and to look unto Him, the author and finisher of our faith, listen to His plea, and then open our hearts and let him do work. Can I say? Some folks just need a tune-up. But then some folks need a complete overhaul. Their entire Christian walk has been a sham. And God's saying, this isn't going to cut it. You need to junk a lot of stuff that you have placed so much emphasis on and get back to me. And if we'll just listen and open up our heart, as that song Brother Clint sings, just give him the keys. Say, Lord, do whatever you need to do. And let him work on us. And let him begin to sup with us. And you get back to where you're supping with him and you fall in love with God. Nothing else matters, friend. There's nothing greater than being so close to Jesus that you hear his heartbeat. In the book of John, John's called the disciple whom Jesus loved. When Jesus announced to his disciples that one of them would betray him, every one of them asked the Lord, Is it I except John? John was leaning on his bosom. When you're that close to God, friend, you're not going to deny him. You're just going to walk with him. You know why John didn't die the way the rest of them did? He died of natural causes because John just stayed close to Jesus. The closer you are to Jesus the less that this world has influence on you and the less important this world becomes to you. God help us to look at this final plea. The Lord is standing outside. Where does the Lord deserve to be? He needs to be right in the center of our life. He's standing outside. He's pleading. He's asking us to listen to him and let him in. Will you let him in tonight? What well, if the Lord opened this thing up where we could have church on Sunday? It shouldn't have to be one of them come to Jesus meetings. The Lord opens them doors we get to come to church. We ought to have a blowout because of everybody that's already been doing business with God leading up to us being able to come to church. Gives you a great appreciation when there's just a few. But re in reality, Clint, this is where we were 20 years ago. We just had a couple. And look at what God did. Maybe God just needed to make us go back and remind us how good he'd been to us. Hmm? Huh? I was talking to Brother Bobby Cato today. My Brother Bobby's been watching. If he's watching, Brother Bobby, I love you. Thank God for you. The blessing you bid. But he 
marked on having the church house at 250. Then before they closed the doors, got down to 10, he says, hard. I'm hoping and praying God allows us to see her filled up again. It might all be conditional on what we do with verse 20, chapter number 3. Why should God let us go back and go through the motions? Somebody needs to open up their heart and let him in. If we all do that, we'll turn our world upside down. Don't wait for somebody else to do business with God. You do business with God. If nobody else does business with God, when you stand before him, you'll know. But you did right because you supped with him. And friend, once you've ever supped with him, nothing else will satisfy you. I trust this has been a help to you tonight. I know God wants to get our attention, wants us to get ready. And I do promise you this. The moment I see a crack in this thing, it's time to open her back up. I'm just looking for the crack. And maybe the crack will come when God's people let Jesus back in. Will you let him in tonight? Will you do business with God tonight? Will you listen to him tonight? Will you open your heart up to him tonight? If so, we may be back at this thing come Sunday. Might be contingent on just you or just me. I'm reminded that little lad gave his lunch to Jesus and all the crowd got the blessing from it. That one little lad had the key to the whole crowd getting fed. You might be the one that holds the key to God sending great revival. Will you listen to him? Will you open your heart? Will you let him come in? And will you sup with him? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, it sure has been a blessing in my life today. Just going through the Psalms and reading on how many times you delivered the psalmist. God, we're thankful that you're a delivering God. Lord, we also know you're a deliberate God. God, again, none of this befell you and caught you by surprise. Lord, you saw it coming and you've been warning that your people hadn't been listening. I pray they're listening tonight. I pray they'll open their heart and say, Lord, thy will be done. God, will you sup with us? Will you help us? Will you allow us to overcome? Will you allow us the privilege of meeting with thee once again. Would you send great revival these days? Lord, there's so many lost without hope. Lord, your church needs to get on fire so we can be a beacon that we might really have something to say to them that they might desire what we have. God, I pray we'd see a harvest of revival and then a harvest of souls getting saved. God, this week was the week we were supposed to have our tent revival. Lord, I pray you'd let us have one. I pray, Lord, we'd get serious with you again. I pray we'd see a move of God in these days. Lord, thank you for these that did get to come tonight, their desire to come. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing and the blessing to be able to see some of your folks. But Lord, we look to, to the day when we can see all of them. Now, God, help us to sup with thee and thee with us. And help us, Lord, experience you afresh and anew like we never have. Lord, have your perfect will in each of our lives, and we'll bless you for it. Thank you for those that tuned in. Bless them, Lord. I know it's hard in their living rooms. Bless them and help them. God will not fail to give you the praise for what you're going to do. Lord, we're looking forward, and we're looking to thee. Have your will and way now, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, if the Lord doesn't let us allow to meet on Sunday, Lord willing, we'll be back at this live streaming again Sunday morning. But I'm trusting and praying we'll be here in the house of God. Until then, keep looking up, friend. Jesus is coming soon. God bless you. Good night. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.